What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're going to be checking out the boot time on this beast. We're going to be going over some basic controller and hyper spin tutorial stuff, and also looking at hyper search. Now in all honesty guys, this bar top is done. I've just basically been playing with it for the past maybe two weeks now. Um... Eugene, we are waiting for COVID to kind of die down, especially in California. That's the only real reason why I still have this bar top. But Eugene, great guy, very patient. He's just basically saying, hey, Vic, try to get as many videos out as he knows. Many people do have a lot of questions. They also like to visually see stuff like this. So I appreciate him for that. And basically, that's why we still have the bar top. Basically, in the future videos, you'll see maybe a couple of live streams. I'm trying to maybe do a live stream on it. Um, I'm definitely going to be doing a video of me crating it, building the crate and all that right before it goes out. So just stay tuned for that. Um, but for right now, again, this beast is officially done. We're just taking the videos now and waiting for COVID to die down. And hopefully it goes away soon. With that though, there's always a plus to it. Basically, again, the biggest thing I do always update is PC games. So I just added two more PC games to it. So that's it's not like wasted time. It's not like I'm not doing anything. I have my basic stuff. Um, but the big thing I do have now is that I do have a lot of people that message me and go, hey, Vic, I want this. I want PS3 emulation. I want 360. How much? How much? How much? I have two guys in New York that are wanting now uh, a hyperspin build. But again, for me, I try to do it on a budget. I try to help people out and try to get it the cheapest as possible. But with that, I physically, personally, have never tested those systems out on a budget beast, which I always refer to as the Dell Optiplex. Um, if you think about it, there's two systems, two computers, two different price points. This beast right next to me is current gen stuff. This is balls to the wall insanity. You could take a look at the first video in the playlist for the 40 terabyte Shinko Hadouken build. You're talking $3,000 just in PC hardware alone. You got to remember, we got 10 terabyte drives. Those drives aren't cheap. Those clock in at $350, $400 each drive. So that's the reason why it goes to $3,000, but also giving that to current gen um, CPUs and all that. The Optiplex, I could do it for cheap, but I've never tested 360 emulation. I never said PS3 or a Switch. We see how it is on this beast, and not all this beast can't handle all games I throw at it. But that's not because the PC is not powerful enough. That's also based on emulation. So I do have two people basically in New York that want this build, but they do want it on a budget as they really don't want to pay $3,000 alone just in PC hardware components. So I understand that. I do try to do stuff on the affordable side of it, which is why I have the budget beast. But I personally have never tested emulation on that setup. I'll be getting into it. Maybe I'll, I do have a Dell Optiplex as my test bench kind of um basic computer i use to download stuff so i could always try that out i do have a graphics card and it, it is running 16 gigs of ram with an i5 so i could test it out it's more about i'm the type where i don't really like to use external hard drives i do have my stuff on an external hard drive so i now have to consider maybe bottlenecking is happening so i'll probably do that but again just to kind of give you an update and stuff people always message me you could always message me i'm down to help but you have to also remember that there's basics as far as like hardware. Like you have, we have to pay for hardware. So if you can't pay for the hardware, what makes you think that you're going to buy the hyperspin build? I don't sound like an asshole, but let's be real. But aside from that, I wanted to take this video real quick just to go over some basic tutorial stuff, controller stuff, and all that. As um, you know, Eugene would love to you know see the tutorials, and it's always good to you know just see it. But I do talk a lot. Um, so excuse that. But the biggest thing right now is um, basically yesterday, I spent all day yesterday backing up my drives and basically taking all the info, all my hyperspin database files and all that, and basically backing it up. So now this computer is all set. I figure I have it off. I want to put a stopwatch on it. And we are going to basically see boot time. We're going to boot, let the PC boot up. We're going to go into hyperspin. We're going to go into MAM Arcade and we're going to launch an actual game and we'll see basically how long that takes. With this beast of a setup, I mean, just boot time on this is like 10 to 15 seconds. It's no joke. Um, so I definitely want to shoot this and take a look at the boot time on this. All right, guys. So I got power going to the bar top right now. I never set up any PCs uh, to basically turn on once you give power to the power supply. I never set computers up like that. I'm just a very firm believer that there's 
that's too much power at once uh, for a power strip. I'm just a freak like that, I guess. So basically, right now there's power to the actual PC and everything, but we do have to press the power button that's on top of the cabinet to actually turn on the PC. So basically, I've, I've always been trying to figure out how to, how to record this. Um, again, I do want to show off the boot time on this. Um, basically, I'm just going to have my phone stop uh, a stopwatch on my phone. We're going to launch the PC. We're going to turn it on. We're going to launch Hyperspin. We're going to go into MAM Arcade. Uh, we'll play Metal Slug. Uh, this way I could search through Hyperspin. And we're going to boot Metal Slug. So I do know for a fact, like, you know, I, I want to show off how fast this PC boots up and how fast it's basically ready to go right when it, it boots on. Um, basically, like, if you look at my old Dell Optiplex video, because we weren't running an SSD, you would have to wait like two or three minutes on the desktop for it to be fully ready to go, basically. Um, so right now, I do know for a fact, like, I might be cheating the number because I'm going to go through Hyperspin and search for Metal Slug real quick. Um, meaning, like, you know, I'll, I'll hold down and, and skip the letters and all that. But um, at least it's, it's going to give us a good idea as far as boot time and how fast this thing boots up. So right now, I'm going to basically get my stopwatch out ready. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a countdown. The webcam's not really catching it. I'll, I'll just bring it closer. But three, two, one, here we go. So we literally got stopwatch going. I have to now make sure that my OBS Studios is doing its thing. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using the mouse to basically click on the Hyperspin program, obviously. And then I'm going to be using the joysticks to basically navigate Hyperspin. I'm trying to make sure that I still have my numbers there. So even right now, we're at 30 seconds just booting to the desktop. I'm going to click on Hyperspin. Cool. I'm going to go in my main ROMs. And I'm under R, so I'm literally going to go to M. I'm going to go down. And we're basically going to look for Metal Slug real quick. trying to multitask and see the, the numbers. We're almost there. So Metal Slug. A hold down button one. Loading complete. And we're basically in there. So count it on that. Basically a minute. A minute 15. Uh, granted that, you know, going for M to Metal Slug. So there was a lot of Mahjong. I'm not going to call it like that, though, but try to think a minute. A minute from the P you pressing the power button to getting in a game. It took us a minute and 15 seconds, which is unreal. Those numbers are absolutely unbelievable. And again, that is devoted strictly to SSDs, number one. And honestly, this beast of a PC. So as you can see right now, I could literally play some Metal Slug within a minute. So comparing that to like the Dell Optiplex build, which wasn't using a, um, an SSD. I have to mention that. That's why now all my builds, I do highly suggest to do an SSD, at least for the Windows stuff. But the also big note is to take in mind that I do have my main Hyperspin actual files on the SSD. It's on a C drive SSD. So Eugene's build is a one terabyte C drive SSD. So just keep that in mind. Again, unbelievable the speed on that. A minute. You're literally talking a minute just, just to get that. So that's great stuff. Uh, so now in this part, we'll, we'll basically talk about basic kind of um, controller settings or basic tutorial if you think about it. Um, it's really easy. It's very simple. On the face of the bar top, we do have four buttons. There's an exit, a load, a save, and a go. So right now, if I'm bored playing this game, I just press exit and it'll bring me back to the main menu. I'm just trying to think how I want to go about this. So I would actually rather exit out completely. There we go. Cool. We'd rather do that. So basically, if you were first turning on your PC, you're going to see this. I never have hyperspin set to basically launch once Windows is ready to go. Only because some people don't always go right into Hyperspin. They might want to go into maybe a PC game. They might want to go into like, I don't know, maybe they want to play Warzone online. So instead of having Hyperspin load up and then you had to exit it, I always have it now just simply set to just 
go to the desktop like a normal PC would. Um, so the big thing that a couple people do get confused, but also a cool thing that I just learned, um, thanks to a person named Anonymous <laughs> on YouTube, uh, he showed me basically a great hint as far as Xbox controllers and how to turn them off. Basically, like, you know, when we turn on a, an Xbox controller, in the videos you've seen, I've actually been pulling the batteries out. I've been opening this up. And with his tip, he literally just says, hold down the Xbox logo for seven seconds, and that controller will basically turn off. <laughs> so shout out to Anonymous for that. Told Eugene that. He's like, oh, shit, I don't have to worry about pulling batteries. So, again, I don't know everything. <laughs> but you'll learn something new every day. So I always appreciate that. Thank you again, Anonymous, for that tip because that tip saves my ass a lot because I always keep pulling batteries out. Uh, so the big thing as far as how we're going to start up and how the system works and all that. If you launch Hyperspin right now, I have no, no joysticks, no, no, no Xbox controllers on, I should say. Once you launch Hyperspin, the arcade sticks will always work. If you do have an Xbox controller on, the arcade sticks will work, and also the Xbox controller will work. So Eugene was a little bit confused. He thought that he had to go and change a setting to make the Xbox controller work. No. It's, it's just whatever you have on, it will work. So whether you have the Xbox controller on, or if you don't, either way, the arcade sticks will always work. And if you do have the Xbox controller on, the Xbox controller will work. So now it's really cool. Eugene gave me a great idea. He said, hey, Vic, can you like make me like a schematic? for this so basically i went and of course i did it i made a little bit of a schematic as far as how to use the controller especially with the xbox controller so i have two files here and i'll rename them before i send it out and stuff but basically the first file here is how to use your xbox controller in actual hyperspin menu so again it's just kind of cleaner a little bit neater and such so there's really basically um two buttons that you should really know which is basically enter and then exit um, so basically on the, on the Xbox controller, I have long press on A is enter. And I have that now on all my builds. Long presses are a godsend. I think it's just so much easier to avoid any mishaps or mistake button pressing. So enter is a long press and exit to go back is also a long press. That's also on the arcade stick. So it's a great feature. I think it's so much easier just to avoid kind of accidentally pressing on a game that you didn't even want and stuff. So I do have, again, long press on button A is your enter. Um, as far as go back, in my videos, you always see me use the R2 button, but I also mapped it to the Xbox logo here. Um, this way, it's just kind of easier because in consoles, you do hold the Xbox button to exit. So I figured it's an easy thing to set up. I basically have escape key set to the Xbox logo. Um, as far as navigation, that was a big thing that Eugene was also questioning about. Navigation is super easy. You could either use the analog stick or the D-pad. I always tend to use the D-pad. There's a couple things that I do notice, and it's really with the Xbox controllers, whenever the batteries are going to be dying out or kind of slowing down, or I should say running out. Um, basically, sometimes your left analog stick might be stuck going to the right without you even touching it. Um, so I'm going to try to initiate that inside of hyperspin to kind of show you off with that. But I always use the D-pad to navigate. It's just so much easier because sometimes using the analog stick, you might be going on a little bit of a diagonal and you actually click to the right and it, it kind of skips letters and stuff. So I usually use the D-pad on that. And you can see here on the bottom left, it says here, if you hold either left or right, it will bring up that letter menu that you did see me before do with Metal Slug. Or if you tap, it'll just kind of quickly jump to the next letter. So if you were, like I was going from S to M, I was going to just hold down and then search the letter. If I was going from R to S, I could just quick tap to the right. And we're going to basically launch up Hyperspin and show you how it's done. So since I'm on the subject of Xbox controllers, I'm going to turn on this Xbox controller. It doesn't matter how many you have on one or two or all four, it doesn't matter. But since I have the Xbox controller on before I launch Hyperspin, this controller will work in Hyperspin. And again, still the arcade sticks will work. Okay. So we're going to launch Hyperspin. Again, I have my Xbox controller on. I have the game menu low. Good. So I could use up and down on the D-pad to navigate. And again, I could use the analog stick if I wanted to. So now keep in mind again, also the arcade stick is still usable and you can basically still search so whether you have the xbox controller on 
and you want to still use the arcade stick to search, you could do that. As far as now going into a system, let's say we wanted to run the Sega Master System, you literally hold down the A button and it brings you into that wheel. If you wanted to exit, you could hold down R2, it'll bring you back. If I hold down A again to enter, and if I do a quick Xbox logo tap, it brings me back, okay? So very easy, again, it's super simple. As far as bringing up that low, that well, now inside systems, you can't, it's not in alphabetical order. My systems wheel, my main wheel is not in ABC order. I have a kind of setup where it's like arcade stuff is in arcades, as you see. And then we go into Mugen, which is kind of like, I don't want to say fake stuff, but like user creative stuff. And then you get into like your system. So we have DOS box. We have then pinball, all the pinball stuff. So like Nintendo is NES, Super Nintendo, the Game Boy, N64. And then I have it set up to handhelds. So you got that, the 3DS and stuff. So this has no alphabetical order. So if you hold left or right, nothing will happen. It's more about when you actually go in game. So if I go into Nintendo Wii, I'm holding down A to enter. Now, if I hold left or right, doesn't matter which one you do. If you hold one, you'll have the letter menu as you can see. So now, if I wanted to play Super Mario, I'm going to go to S and hold down A to press A OK on S, and you're good. You'll learn the shortcuts. In all honesty, if you were doing Super Mario, you should really go to T and then go up from there because U is closer to the end of the alphabet. Now, if you wanted to jump letters real quick, if I tap left or right, I'm going left. So it's going backwards. So R, Q, P. If I tap right, Q, R, S, T, U. So that's like quick letter jumping. If I wanted to go right now to, I don't know, F, you're better off going inside with this kind of letter menu option. Again, if I wanted to exit out, I just tap the Xbox logo and you're back. It's really easy. That's literally all you need to know as far as navigation. Now, right now, this, com this controller is brand new batteries. Um, so it's not really giving me a headache as far as, you know, kind of controlling the screen. Um, let me just see if I can show you real quick. If I press the Windows key and basically go to my little taskbar here. I'm going to open up my main. It's here. You can actually see it right now. Okay, cool. This is good. So I'm not holding any key right now on the joystick, but this right here is saying that the, the joystick's being held. So you might have to just give it kind of like a little bit of a tap, and then usually it kind of fix itself. So as you can see, it did that. Um, and sometimes it, it, it will be annoying because it might bring up the letter menu, and you don't want the letter menu. So again, it's just something where, as you can see, if you give it a tap, it'll, it'll kind of stick and then just got to move it out of the way. So it doesn't have an in-game. It's just kind of in hyperspin. That's why I always use the D-pad to navigate. As far as like that, that's, that's, like, that's a quick look at my um, joy ticky. So if you wanted to see that, you could see that. But basically, again, there is sometimes, it happens sometimes, where if you're in the menu and like all of a sudden, like, you're not holding the analog stick and it brings this up. Just got to give your analog stick a little bit of a, of a hit to it. It's not a software issue. It's not a hyperspin issue. It's just the joystick. And I've noticed that it's basically based on batteries. Um, new batteries, there's no issue with it. But again, you might, you might have a drift, they call it. But as of right now, I have no issues at all. Now, if I exit out, I'm going to exit out. And I'm going to do an anonymous tip. I'm going to turn off the Xbox controller by holding down the 7 button. The 7 button. The Xbox button for 7 seconds, I should say. And the Xbox controller now is off. So if I launch Hyperspin right now, basically you have to use the arcade sticks to navigate Hyperspin. So right now there is no Xbox controller on, so they don't work. You have to now use the arcade sticks because we launched Hyperspin without the Xbox controllers on. So again, you could use your joystick, so up and down, just like normal. Um, on the actual arcade buttons, there's two enter buttons. We have button one on player one, that's the top left one, or the actual go button, which a lot of people usually suggest to use the go button, as that's really what it was designed for. Um, but basically, if you want to go into a system, you could hold down button one. That's your enter. And for you to exit, 
you have to press the exit key, which is on the faceplate of the bar top. That's it. It's very easy. So if I go into a system, and instead of pressing button one, I could hold down the go button. And as you can see, we're in. I could hold the left or the right joystick to bring up our letter menu. I'm using the arcade stick right now to bounce around. Once you have one, you could either press go or press enter or hold down button one, I should say, and you'll jump to that letter. So if I wanted to go, let's say to S, I could go to S and then hold down button one and we're good. There you go. So again, long press on the escape key to bring it back and long press again if you wanted to exit. It says yes, we press green button, good to go. That's really it. That's kind of basics as far as navigating with hyperspin. All right, so now I'll talk about the new feature, which is hyper search. It's not new. I've never had it in my build, but after going through this specific build for 45,000 games, hyper search is a pretty cool um, tool. Has some of its downsides, not in a bad way, but it's something in mind, but it also has a lot of plus sides to it. Um, so for right now, I'm not going to use any Xbox controls. I'm going to launch hyperspin again with just basically using the arcade sticks as I do want to show off HyperSearch on it. So HyperSearch I have basically right, it's really item number one on the main menu wheel, um, which is above MAM Arcade. And just a kind of quick overview of HyperSearch, it basically takes all the databases, sorry, it basically takes all the databases and then you could search for any game or any title, I should say, and it will basically find it quickly for you. So instead of you going through each system and then looking for it you can basically launch hyper search just to find your game real quick so right now i'm going to hold down button one on the arcade sticks it's going to launch a cmd and now we have this keyboard basically we could search any game it has to be like a word that's in the game you want to play so if you were wanting to play i don't know def jam fight for new york you have to put def or jam or fight or put the whole thing in I'm actually going to take this now because I just downloaded a PC game that was just updated, uh, which is a Power Rangers game. It's not new, apparently. It's, uh, I put it on my Instagram story. Uh, it's been out for a year. I never had it. It's a Marvel vs. Capcom style fighter with Power Rangers. So what's cool about this right now, you could use the keyboard and mouse to make things faster, but you could use the arcade stick to search. So basically, it's just, you know, button one. I'm going to look up power. I'm going to use the space and I'm just going to put like power RA. I'm not going to put the whole title in. I'm just going to put power RA and I'm going to press OK. And basically it found 58 games that contain the word power RA. So as you can see, it doesn't show all Power Ranger games. Look at the first one on the top left. We have this power drive rally. It's power and RA. So I found this game. There's a Powerpuff Girls game here. So I think it found power and then the RA in this extraction word. Um, so again, it's just kind of to help you out. At the top, you do see the system that it is. So Xbox 360, the 3DS. In the middle, you do have kind of a video, a little preview, if I have the video file for it. And then on the bottom is the actual game logo that you would find in the wheel, basically. So the game I put in, it's a PC game. I don't see it right now on this menu, so I'm going to press next. Look, we have all the Game Boy games. I'm going to press next. Game Boy Color. There's a Wii game. So it's really cool. If you put your mouse over it, there's actually audio to the actual video file. So that's pretty cool. Once you put your mouse over it, that's awesome. If I go next one more time, maybe. Yes, it's here. So this is the game I just put on. This is Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. The big thing is that you do want to make sure it's red. You see that red? If I put my mouse in the middle of it, I think, see, it's not red right now. If I press enter, it doesn't register. It has to be red. So me going over the logo, it's red. So if I press enter on that, it now gives me kind of like a history. I don't have any of those information that's filled out, especially like my PC games. I don't have any video, so that's why there's no video file. And basically, you just press play, and it's going to launch it. So instead of you going to the PC games wheel and then searching for it, it basically found it here. So again. This game isn't new, but it's new to my drive because I just, I, just, I just got it. So it is utilizing the arcade sticks. It is a fighting game. So it's pretty cool. Like I'm literally Marvel versus Capcom style fighter with Power Rangers. I'll bump up the volume a little bit. 
and I'm using Xbox 360 CE to make it work with the arcade stick. So if I press any button, I could go down. Let's go to versus. We'll do two players, so left and right, just to show you that two players work. And I'll just kind of random characters. Really cool game. I mean, again, I wasn't a big fan of Power Rangers growing up. My brother was and my sister was. Maybe I was too young for it. It was out when I was young, but I just I didn't have any interest in it. So literally a PC game. I do notice that this game is an eight button game. So it's the six buttons for your regular sticks. And then it's utilizing also coin and start. So coin and start is an actual button. So there are some PC games that do need eight buttons. Most commonly is the fighting games like uh, Mortal Kombat. So just to show it off real quick, you got one player, I got two player going on. And the kind of downside to this game um, is there's no pause menu. So you can't hit escape to exit out. You have to let this game, you have to basically finish this fight. So with that, I might as well just kind of beat this person up. Could like really learn like your um, button mashing to it. <laughs> Now, what I did notice that if you do want to unleash the super, it's coin and start together. So, pretty cool, right? We'll bring in player two. Let's try to bring this guy's uh, special in. Cool, so we got one down. Bring him in. Coin and start together. Huh. Very cool. So again, it's not a new game, but it's new to my drive, and it's a very, um, it's a really cool game, especially with the graphics on it. I mean, Power Rangers meets Marvel versus Capcom style fighter, three player fighter too. Awesome. So there you guys have it. That is Power Rangers Battle of the Grid. Battle for the Grid. It's cool. So now, again, this is a real PC game. So there's no holding down the exit key. You have to actually exit the game like you would with a PC game. So if I quit and I quit, we're back. Now, here's the one downside to Hyper Search. This program is just like Joy to Key. Once it's launched, it doesn't exit. So right now, as you can see, we didn't go back into that keyboard kind of scenario, that keyboard setup. Um, so right now, if I want to go back and search for another game, if I hold down button one, you're going to see the command line launches, then nothing happened. That's because Hyper Search is already launched. And basically, it needs a keyboard input to come back to the front. It's really behind Hyperspin right now. It's really actually inside the the task tray. So what do you do? It's really F12 to bring this menu up. You're not gonna remember F12. So basically I have the save button on the arcade stick. If you hold that down, that launches F12. And now with that, we have control again, and you can now go and kind of search for a different game. So now with that, if I go, I could press back. Like if I wanted to search for the word Mario, Now, also here, we have to be careful because Joytsuki was launched, brought back, hypersearch. If you see, if I press left, you can see that it's actually moving over the, um, the bar. That's because uh, it has my left and right arrow keys to navigate. So just be careful when you are typing. You want to make sure that you do have the, the flashing bar. So if I press OK on Mario, it found 418 Mario games. Any game that has the word Mario in it, it found it. So we have a bunch of arcade classics here. You got some MS-DOS. Wow, look at that. This has Mario Teaches Typing. I learned how to type with Mario Teaches Typing. So that's, that's pretty cool to see. And again, going through all the entire database within the system, any game that had the word Mario in it, it located it.
that's really hyper search. That's really it. Now, the big thing I did notice that if you do escape now, if you press escape on this, it brings you back to the keyboard. And if I press escape again, this actually exited hyper search. So if I hold down F12, nothing happens. I have to now relaunch basically hyper search. So now if I hold down button one, it will relaunch hyper search. So again, not too tedious. It's not too difficult. It's definitely a cool feature. You just got to keep in mind that when you first launch hyper search, you want to bring it back. You just have to hold down the save button. And that's really it. That is hypersearch, some basics as far as hyperspin and all that. I guess to close out the video um, is really to go over kind of shutting down the computer, I guess. So you exit out of the hyperspin, you hit the Windows key, and you just press shut down. You could also, and I, I, I only suggest this, as long as you're in the desktop and you don't have anything else open, you could literally just press the top of the bar top, the power button, and it turns it off. You want to do that with nothing running, making sure hyperspin is exited, no programs running in the background. And there you guys have it. We have literally the Shinku Hadouken 40 terabyte beast of a PC booting and playing within one minute and 15 seconds.